I offer my pranams to the lotus feet of our masters. I pray our masters give us all the perfect understanding. It's Swami who speaks through us. It's Swami who listens through all of us. Hari Om Tat Sat Om Namah Shivaya. Chapter 6, Slokam number 5. So in Slokam number 5, Bhagavan is saying that the self, elevate the self. Do not uh, degrade the self. Then in the second line, Bhagavan says, Atmaiva Hyatmano Bhanduhu Atmaiva Ripuratmanaha. Don't depend on anywhere else. Atmaiva Atmano Bhanduhu. Your self is your best friend. Your self alone is your best friend. So the self, it can be your best friend and it can be your worst enemy. That is explained. In the spiritual path, you alone is your relation only the best friend is you no kith and kin no well-wisher no friend no uh, thick uh, friend or anybody not even master says not even your guru can help you yourself only can go and elevate yourself in the spiritual path atmaiva ripuratmanaha ripuhu means enemy the same can be your enemy how if your mind and intellect if they are not in sync, if they are not friendly to yourself, if you have not purified them properly, if you have not controlled them properly, then they will become the, the worst disturbance during your meditation. They will be your worst enemy. So, do not degrade yourself, do not weaken yourself, elevate yourself. Your self is your best friend. And if your senses and mind and body is not controlled, it's not purified, then the same self can become your worst enemy. Slokam number 6. Banduratma, Banduratma Yenatmaivatmana Jitaha Anatmanas Tuchatrutve Vartetatmaiva Shatruvat our own body, mind and sen mind, sense and intellect. These are our equipments. These are our instruments. These instruments, if they are not controlled properly, then they cannot behave like your, they cannot be your best friend. They can create all disturbances to you. So with the help of intellect, we have to achieve the way to control these equipments. If these equipments are not controlled, then we cannot proceed in this path. So, um, <clears throat> Master gives one example. The body, if it goes in one direction, the mind, it goes in one direction, the intellect that is deciding in some other direction, the senses are attracted to some other direction, completely, totally disintegrated. When such a person is totally disintegrated, then if he go and sit in meditation forcefully, he cannot meditate. So, with the proper path, <coughs> excuse me, following the proper path, the karma yoga, acquiring the knowledge, purifying the mind, 
get all these senses the mind the intellect the body everything under control when it is integrated then it helps for our spiritual path it helps for the meditation bandhuratma bandhuratma atmanastasya one who conquered himself atmanastasya by himself so the mind is completely with the intellect the senses are completely tuned with the mind the body with the help the with the help of the sense and mind is all integrated when all these are integrated it is then you are under perfect understanding with that understanding if you go and sit for meditation the meditation helps otherwise it would just be a fascination because your mind our mind if it is not controlled in the proper way through proper knowledge it we it, it it stores lot of vasanas past memories our past memories may have uh, all sort of negative things fear jealous sadness worries may have negative things or sometimes it may have love compassion that is also possible both the things are possible but our mind have to be trained from the childhood or the way the moment we started getting into this path it will have to be trained properly through the process and through the uh, right type of uh, right understanding we have to purify this mind with the purity of the mind we need to go through this process so lord krishna says the first is one who should learn to control the senses this mind this body and when it is controlled not forcefully suppressed when it is forcefully suppressed it is only temporary when some attraction comes this this desires will burst up so instead of forcefully suppressing it through this through the sadhana control these uh, senses and make every equipment become your best friend when it becomes your best friend when it is not agitated when it is not sad when it is not angry when it is not feeling guilty or bad for itself when it is uh, elevated with all this sadhana then you are fit to sit into meditation otherwise all these equipments will become your shatruvat it will become your enemy it will not help you to sit in meditation so bhagwan says one who can win over this mind that person becomes fit for this meditation and how do we win over this mind through the proper sadhana shlokam number 7 chitatmana prashantasya paramatma samahita sitoshna sukha dukkeshu मास्टर गिव्स वन एग्जाम्पल if you um if you know to handle them all these instruments properly then the mind body senses integrate in, in intellect when these are all integrated then it becomes your best friend when they go in their own direction when mind is in some other direction intellect is guide, guiding judging on something else senses are into some other then total dis- disintegration then it becomes your worst enemy i read somewhere one beautiful example for this suppose you have a mobile phone with you and this mobile phone is a beautiful equipment it helps us in many ways but we should know to use this equipment at our will if you know to use this equipment at our will then it is a uh, it is useful for us if we cannot do that then if the mobile phone is controlling you if that is forcing you to look into the mobile phone all the time then you have given the control to that mobile then you are no longer under uh, control you are under the mercy of that mobile phone 
So all the equipments that is given to you, we should know how to use those equipment, how to control those equipments through proper sadhana. If it is not, then that takes over us. When that takes over us, then we have no control over that. Uh, Swami uh, gives one example for this. Uh, a person who is who has tied a cow and he is holding the rope on his hand. Now the, it it uh, now he asks one disciple, who is holding who? The cow is holding the person or the person is holding the cow. The disciple said only the uh, only the person or only the cow is and bound now who is bound master asked who is bound now to say the cow is bound because the cow we have put a rope the person has put a rope and he is holding the rope on his hand so the cow is bound now when the person leaves the rope what happens the cow runs away then who has to run at the at the uh, back of the cow the person has to run but it appears like the cow is uh, bound the similarly you have to use all these equipments we are not holding if you start releasing them then no if you drop all the attachments then all these senses all this mind or all the mind senses and sense objects through proper sadhana if you control them no attachment no time then this that will behave properly to you and that will become your best friend not by force by uh, sadhana by control when we conquer such mind then what does happen to that person prashantasya he becomes calm and quiet prashantasya means that mind has become calm and quiet when the mind is calm and quiet then you are fit to become uh, you are eligible to sit and meditate if it is not calm and quiet if you have lot of unresolved issues in your mind then all these unresolved issues will keep from popping up when you sit for your meditation suppose uh, you fought with your friend friend your friend used abu abused you in public using bad words he has insulted you and you are deeply hurt instead of using your wisdom and resolving that issue if you think i'm going to sit and meditate that unresolved issue will keep coming and popping up when you sit and meditate so all the experiences unresolved issues have to be digested and having digested how can we digest it with good understanding and with good good wisdom with that when we digest all this or when we resolve all the issues then you are free then you can sit on meditation when you sit in such condition you will be absolutely still such person can see paramatma he can see that atma in everything see toshna sukha dukkeshu tatha mano tatha mana apamana yoho there are three examples is here sitoshnam sukha dukham manam apamanam sitoshnam is heat and cold sukha dukham is happiness or unhappiness manam apamanam is honor or dishonor all these three are representing why these three exam these three are quoted here these three are taken these three opposites are taken from three worlds this body to experience the heat and cold mind for the happiness sukham and dukham the intellect which has the honor and dishonor which is manam and apamanam so one who knows to handle all these pairs equally whatever that happens the heat and cold is balanced in your body the happiness and unhappiness the mind is controlled to take whatever that comes as ishwara prasad 
honor or dishonor completely surrender to the lord in all environments in all situations if he maintains that stillness that steadiness then he recognizes that paramatma in everything the yogi is said to be he said to be a yogi if he conquer the mind above all these three pairs all these three opposites when he gets into that such yogis will completely remain peaceful samahitah steadfast in paramatma in the devotion to god shlokam number 8 jnana vijnana trittatma kutasto vijitendriyah yukt ityuchyate yogi samaloshta samaloshta asma kanchanah a yogi can be called as yogi when he is satisfied with the jnanam and vijnanam knowledge and wisdom jnana vijnana triptatma triptatma is satisfied he is satisfied with the knowledge and wisdom kutastayah kutastah who is unshaken kutastah means he cannot be shaken who is unshaken who has conquered the senses vijitendriyah conquered over the senses that person who is looking all at the same level sama loshta sama sama loshta asma kanchanah loshtam means uh, pebbles dirt asma means stone kanchana gold everything looks the same it could be loshta it could be a stone it could be a gold everything looks the same to that person a person who looks everything the same who is not differentiating these with value attachment then that person is said to be yogi samatvam so jnana vijnana triptatma once he is contented completely satisfied with the knowledge and wisdom jnanam and vijnanam what is jnanam just information is not jnanam if somebody says i know the entire mahabharatam that is not jnanam one who is who is not who has got the knowledge of the self who who has seen the brahman who has got the knowledge on the self he is jnanam that is jnanam and what is vijnanam through that mananam smaranam he is completely seeing brahman everywhere who, who there is no differentiation completely he has actually experienced the atma the brahman who is shining in their own atma one who has experienced direct experience by themselves completely on my own self then he is called that is called vijnanam when he get that wisdom when he gets that knowledge then that person is uh he is completely satisfied why he has seen the complete bliss in self with in himself to directly experienced jnana vijnana triptatma when he is completely experienced he becomes kutastah completely steady free from all disturbances his mind is steady in his own self self vijitendriya he is in the midst of all the objects the objects do not attract him he has complete control over his senses which is not attracting through the, with the with the sense objects the senses do not move on its own it can it, it is absolutely under the control for his permission for the realized master's permission what to do and what not to do sama loshta sama kanch sama loshta asma kanchana he is looking everything the 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 dirt the stone the gold everything looks the same for him there is no value attachment gold aha gold it is only a stone eh it's only a stone no everything is the same for that person yuktaha it look for that yuktaha for that uh, learned person everything looks the same but however when he deals with those in with those uh, then he will deal with them according to the utility value 
but they may have different utility purposes but he does not superimpose any value to that and get excited with that such person such yuktaha such person is called yuktaha slokam number 9 suhran mitrar yudhasina madhyastatvesh bandushu साधुष्वेशु समुद्धिर्विशिष्य अगेन ह्योर समत्व इज इंडिकेटेड समत्व इज लुकिंग एव्रीथिंग इन द फॉर एव्रीथिंग द सेम एक्सप्रेशन इन फ्रॉम दि सेल्फ इन बिकॉज ही इज सीन ही इज एक्सपीरियंस दि ब्रह्मांड हिमसेल्फ सो ही एव्रीथिंग लुक्स ब्रह्मांड फॉर हिम फॉर हिम ही Uh, um, how uh, we have seen this example before he sees gold in everything you can show a necklace in front of him or a bangle or a earring everything whatever it can have a different name and form but everything looks like a gold to this person he is only seeing that as gold when he see the the waves in the water in the ocean he only sees that waves though there is there are different forms it sees only as water completely uh samatvam everything he recognizes as water when he sees the waves though it appear different so with respect to this body mind and intellect people may appear different they may have different form they may have different name they may have different uh, likes and dislikes but for this person everything looks brahman he he sees the same the self the the atma the self brahman and he sees the same in everything the realized master the realized yogi who sees everything and remains the same whatever that happens in front of him so when he sees everything the same but whatever that needs to be de- dealt with he will accordingly use his intellect to deal with that uh, particular object or particular uh, person for example lord rama a enlightened person he sees the self in ravanan he sees the self in vidushanan both of them are from the same family he sees both of them the same self however while dealing with ravana he will have to see him as a enemy he will have to fight and destroy his body when he sees vibhishan and he sees a friend in him and he will have to protect him so there are different things however he sees everything the same what are the difference mitraha mitra means friends there will be some people who are completely affectionate to us who will be who will all the time show only affection to us all the time when you go to him he will show the right path to you there are mitra there are friends ari there are enemies for no reason that person will keep harming you for no reason that person will keep hurting you ari udasinaha there will be some people who will show indifferent attitude you mean nothing to them they you, if you are doing something good they won't bother if you are doing something bad they won't bother they will not even consider you they will be indifferent to you udasina they will see indifferent they are neither happy with you they are not unhappy with you madhyastha madhyastha means who plays a mediator role they are neither your enemy nor your friend they will play a mediator role they are neither interested you nor they are interested in their enemy but they will play a uh, um, a neutral role dvesha there will be some people they don't like you at all the moment they see you they will hate you we are also like that sometimes we will feel somebody we the moment we think of them we don't like them that person will be irritating we can also be an irritating person to somebody dvesha bandushu our nearest relatives our born relatives who are our bandhus uh, the relatives who whom we are bound or who are bound around us sadhu one who follows the path of goodness the righteousness the right path a good person papeshu one who is in the path of 
unrighteousness who is a bad person so for a realized person a person who is seen who has experienced the bliss who has experienced the self for that person for that wise man everything remains the same sama buddhi visishyate he sees the same tattva in everything while he interacts with them he will interact with them differently whatever that interaction that person is um, deserve it he will give, interact with that person in that way that interaction is done with this body and mind but when he sees an enemy also he sees the homes the own self in that person so even though using the the wisdom the common sense while interacting with the people outside he remains the uh, the he he sees the brahman in everything the self in everything in every being in every person samatva yogam sees the same in everything though the interaction at the intellect level may differ shlokam number 10 ಯೋಗೀಯುಂಜೀತ ಸತತ ಆತ್ಮಸಿ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಏಕಾಕೀಯತ ಚಿತ್ತಾತ್ಮ ನಿರಾಶೀರ ಪರಿಗ್ರಹ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಟಿವ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಯೋಗಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಯೋಗಿ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಯೋಗಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಯೋಗ ಕರ್ಮ ಯೋಗ ಬಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಯೋಗಿ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಕರ್ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಯೋಗಿ ಯುಂಜೀತ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ರಿಮೇನ್ engaged in the meditation all the time satatam constantly continuous of all the time you should be you should remain engaged in the meditation that doesn't mean master says that doesn't mean that you know all the 24 hours you are going to sit and meditate when you sit and meditate even if it is for 5 minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour you should meditate intensely that completely um, in depth intensely meditate do not getting uh, distracted with the uh, body mind and senses so when we go to sit for meditation we do not we do it secret we do it quietly secretly we are not going to say that you know i'm going to meditate i'm going to meditate or tom tom call everybody that i'm going to meditate no it is in depth serenity with uh, complete sacredness and yunjita you should remain engaged in that meditation meditation satatam constantly atmanam rahasi sitting in a secret place in a seclude seclude place in a seclusion sit separately don't go and sit with your friend and say that i'm meditating get into a solitary place where you are uh, engaging yourself in meditation ekaki when you do meditation you need to do it alone don't think don't take your friend along with you say let us together meditate when you do meditation it is always alone ekaki do it alone yata chitta atma with a controlled mind the mind is not leaking out the sense organs are completely under control they are not attracted towards the sense objects the uh, nirashi hi nirashi means asha means expectation desire nirashi means free from all the desires when aparigraha aparigraha is free from possessions for enjoyment parigraha means possessing enjoy possessing the uh, objects for enjoyment aparigraha free from possessions these two are the avenues which can steal your which can take your mind for a toss these two are aparigraha and nirashi when you asha and parigraha when you are possessing things when you are attaching to the desire to the action or to the object these two are the um um distracting these two these two channels are the avenues that takes your mind runs which runs outward so you need to control these two and when you curb these two channels sit quietly alone and try to turn your mind inward from the outward because the mind and it is it is easy to go outward so turn the mind inward sit in a quiet place sit alone and meditate sthitam bringing constantly engaging your mind in meditation with this
will end today's session. Keeping your back straight, we'll chant Om three times. Om. 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 Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Peace 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 Om Bhula Swami Sadguru Shivananda Maharaj Ki Jai Om Bhula Swami Vishnu Devananda Maharaj Ki Jai Hari Om That's it Om Namah Shivaya Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity Thanks for joining Enjoy a beautiful evening. See you tomorrow, the same time, 4 o'clock.